All right, let's try out another one here. It's good to just practice these and see what's going on. So I have e to the x is going to be my function. So I want to find the McLaren series and the interval of convergence is what we're going for here. So the first thing we're going to do find is the McLaren series. If I'm finding the McLaren series, I know that I'm centering around zero, right? All right. So let's find the first few terms. So it's always good practice, even though it doesn't tell you to find the first four terms, do it. Because that's how you see those patterns emerging. So we're taking the derivative. I know this is McLaren, so I'm centering this around zero. All right, so I've got e to the x. So if I have this, my deriv my der oh, for crying out loud in a bucket, my original function is e to the x. If I plug in a zero to that, e to the zero is one. Now what's the derivative of e to the x? E to the x, what? How awesome is this? And so then that of course is one. So my derivative of e to the x is e to the x. And so every single time I plug this zero into my exponent, e to the zero is one every single time. Cool, right? All right. So this is McLaren, so I know my a is equal to zero, obviously. So I now have one plus one over one, just giving me that x plus one over two factorial of x squared, one over three factorial of x cubed, etc. So this is nice and easy, right? So my e to the x here is going to be my series from zero to infinity of what? It's all positive, so that's good. Yeah, x to the k over k factorial. So if I plug in a zero here, zero factorial, one factorial, two factorial, three factorial, same thing, x to the zero, first exponent, two, three. Nailed it. Cool, right? There's my McLaren series. I'm next charged with taking this series and finding the interval of convergence. All right. So if I find this interval of convergence, I've got a factorial here. So in order to work with that, I know I have to use my ratio test. I'm going to take the limit as k approaches infinity of x to the k plus 1 over k plus 1 factorial times k factorial over x to the k. Of course, in absolute values. Would it wig you out if I shortcutted kind of like what we talked about last time? Where this x to the k takes out that, and then this x to the k takes out that exponent? Because you can break them up, but you're gonna, that's what you're going to always end up with. So I'm really looking at the limit as my k approaches infinity here of x over k plus 1. Now what happens when k approaches infinity? This whole thing goes to 0. And because 0 is less than 1, I know this converges absolutely. So my interval of convergence here for my McLaren is from negative infinity to positive infinity. Let me fix that one a little bit here. All right. If this wigged you out then make sure you're sending me an email or asking me in class when we have our virtual sessions, all right? You could always write it all the way out and then you can come up with that. So here is my McLaren series for e to the x and the interval of convergence is infinite. All right, now, now that we know that, all right, now that we know that that's what my setup is, Let's change our color up. I'm going to write it up here again. We know that e to the x, the McLaren, 
It's not just any e to the x. We know the McLaren now. And that e to the x here, going from 0 to infinity of x to the k over k factorial, and my interval of convergence is infinite. And I know that this also is equivalent to the polynomial 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial, x cubed over 3 factorial, etc. Okay, so we've got that down. All right, now we're going to kick it back to kind of what we did at the end of that last, that last section. We want to use the McLaren series to find, so use this e to the x to find this new McLaren series of what's given here. And I'm given x to the fourth e to the x. Right, so these are multiplied. So I saw this before when we did our other ones. When we see that these are multiplied, no problem. We just go in and we multiply it. It's no big deal. So this is now my series. K is going from zero to infinity of x, pardon me, x to the fourth times not e times this business up here, times x to the k over k factorial. Like bases, you add those exponents. So if I'm going to add up those exponents, then we end up with k going from 0 to infinity of x to the k plus 4 over k factorial. And that is my series. All right. Okay, let's do another one. We could, of course, write out the polynomial that goes with this. Also, I was just looking because I can't remember if your homework has you write out the polynomial or just the series for those. Write the, you want to find the first four non-zero terms. Yeah, I think it's just writing out your series is okay. All righty. Two. Let's do this thing. What if I have another one here using that same e because I just want to practice manipulating this a little. We have e to the negative 2x. What do you do with that? Yeah. That's an input, right? My input is this negative 2x. That's my input value, so I'm inputting it there. If I input it on this e, then you're going to input it in your actual formula too. So this negative 2x is also input in place of this x. Remember how we talked? If you have that negative sign, then with that negative sign, you have to pull it out to show that it is alternating. So you've got negative 1 to the k, 2x to the k over k factorial. But you want to pull out that negative 1 because you want to show that it is alternating. All right? That's important. Okay. Let's try one more practice run here. I'm given e to the negative x squared. Another input. Right? So this is an input. So I'm going to put it as my input. K is going from 0 to infinity of negative x squared. Oops, my bad. Try again. To the k all over k factorial. When I'm plugging this in, I'm only plugging it in for that x value because that is my input. 
all right? Now, the same thing's happening here. This is an alternating series. So because this is an alternating series, you want to pull out that negative. I have negative 1 to the k x to the 2 k here. <clears throat> Pardon me, because power to a power you multiply all over that k factorial. All right, so if you know, so here's the beauty of McLaren series. As soon as you know the McLaren series, you don't have to do all of the work in order to figure it out like this. I don't have to go through that whole process. You don't have to go through the whole setting up the chart and working that out. Whammo jabammo. It's if you know the McLaren series, then you're good to go. Now, ah, ha, ha, you know we're going to have something in here. There are a few common McLaren series. All right, you've got your geometric here, the 1 over x. That's one that we did in that previous example, and it's that same thing here. So let me put in this. It's an infinity on top. I must have pulled that off there. So your geometric that you have, that's our first one. The, they're having these, so I just pulled this out of the book. These are the same, guys. Look at this. This is just inputting a negative x. You don't need to memorize that. You've already got that up here. You're just putting in a negative x. That means you just take it as an alternating. No biggie. So I wouldn't really worry about that one. That's an easy input. Your e to the x, that's another good memorizer. Sine, cosine, and inverse tangent. Now... You may, you know how my math lab does stuff sometimes. Pretty sure I took it out. Nope, it's in there. So you have one in your homework where you may need to. No, no, no. I took it out. I took it out. I took it out. You're good. So you don't really need to know these natural logs. That's not that big of a deal. If you want to memorize something else, you can. That's not something I would work at. Cosine, look how easy this is. Cosine and sine. Remember how we talked about cosine being an even function? And we found that one. Sine is just an odd function. So you literally, it's an alternating function, or an alternating series still, but it's just odd. So you use 2k plus 1, that's it. Still infinite convergence. e to the x we just did, that's super easy. And then you know your geometric is super easy. Tangent is the exact same thing, inverse tangent, is the exact same thing as sine because it's odd. You just miss the factorial here, and it only goes between uh, 1 and negative 1. All right? Those are good ones to know.